Hey guys, it's Coach Char. Welcome back to my online videos for this digital learning. We are still working in the 200 page packet. We are now on page nine. This was uh, beginning to work for the third week in the packet. The was supposed to be the fifth week overall, the week of, it was last week, so the 20th through the 24th. So I'm going to do page 9 here, and then do a video for page 10, page 11, and page 12. All right, so we're starting at 44. A circle equation. Again, I think we've uh, we've seen enough of this. I was actually thinking about putting out maybe a separate video talking about it. We've seen enough like this. There's some circle equation stuff we haven't covered. Um, but I might kind of do a supplementary, supplementary video for that, even though I won't necessarily give you all any work about it. But... This one actually asks it a little differently than what we've seen. It says, what is the equation of a circle, excuse me for the finger, I'm sorry, whose center is four units above the origin in the coordinate plane and whose radius is six? So you could certainly draw this one out if you would like. Okay, so the center of the circle is four units above the origin. So if we remember, our origin is zero, zero, right? Let me actually draw this out. This might give you a little something y'all can actually draw out, okay? So, all right, here's your origin, zero, zero. The center of the circle is four units up, right? One, two, three, four. Four units above the origin, so there it is. That's the center of your circle. I'm marking these and y'all are gonna see why in a second. This is actually gonna It's going to go off the paper. Um, so I might just kind of draw the bottom half of the circle. But. All right. So I drew our origin right here. I just them a little bit. This, I made this for our origin. But this is the center of our circle. Okay. It said it has a radius of six. So we could go down one, two, three, four, five, six. Go right. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to be a little wider than it should be, but whatever. Left six, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, did not do six. Six. So this would kind of be the bottom half of our circle, if you will. Just rising it and have it on it. And get it, we keep going up. It would go a little bit off the page from how I have it. But again, you can kind of draw that out. We've seen some diagrams like this before. But again, the main thing is I know my center is at zero, four. And the radius, that doesn't look like a four, sorry. All right, zero, four, the radius is six. So again, if we go back and look at the equation of a circle, right? When we put it in, we need our, whatever our X coordinate is for our center, and we gotta take the opposite sign. But since the X coordinate is zero, regard, where is it? I lost it, there we go. Regardless of whether I did, um, whether I have minus zero there or plus zero there, it's not doing anything. So really that would just actually be X squared, okay? So X squared, all right? Here, Y minus K. Again, I want the Y coordinate, but I want the opposite sign. Y coordinate is four. So I would really want negative four, okay? And then... Radius squared. Told me my radius is six. So do six squared. That would be left like that. And all I'd have to do is make the six squared 36. So let's see if that's one of our answer choices. And it is answer choice three. Again, another answer choice three, answer choice C. We've seen so many of those in this packet. All right. Segment. AB is the diameter of circle M. The coordinates of A are negative 4, 3. The coordinates of M are 1, 5. What are the coordinates of B? Okay, so again, this is one we didn't really learn. And you might have a hard time visualizing this before I actually draw it out. But I'm going to start to draw it out so maybe y'all can see. Okay, so I got... I have to go a little lower on this one actually. Hold on. 
I'm redrawing this. I know it's out of picture, but you know, give me a second. And then one five. All right, so I kind of have this drawn right here, right? So again, the circle would be going, this is the center of my circle at one five. So it'd be going all the way around, right? So my circle would kind of be probably coming down probably about right here. I'm just kind of guesstimating with this, right? Where this is, okay? So again, if you think about diameter, it's going straight across, right? Like that. So kind of the idea here is, and again, it's not really the scale. You basically, however long it takes you to get from this point to the center, we gotta go up and over, we gotta do the same thing and we would hit the circle on the other side again. This is going to kind of be not to scale. But if we count, I'm going to go over one, two, three. It's supposed to be at three, so it's a little less. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go right five. And I'm going to go up two. So if I were to go right five again, one, two, three, four, five, up two, one. Maybe it's just our curve back a little bit. We'll up one, two. That would be the other one. All right. So again, one five, I'll go right five, up two, should put me at, I'm not gonna count it out, but it should be again, right five would add five to there, up two would add two, that should be six, seven. Is that one of our answer choices? It is answer choice one, okay? So there's that one. Is there another one below it is? All right, a couple below it. All right, triangle DEF, the measure of angle D is 3X plus 5, the measure of angle E is 4X minus 15, the measure of angle F is 2X plus 10. Which statement is true? So I might have said this in one of my last videos, or I might have been talking to someone else about an example. I don't remember, but I said kind of an example about this kind of reason. It might have been one of my last videos. I think it was about like showing work or whatever. Maybe I, I might have been describing it to my fiance. I don't remember. But again, you got to kind of remember the idea here. Okay. We have three expressions that represent the angles. All right. So I don't have an actual degree. But again, I know the three angles have to add up to what? 180 degrees. Right. So I would add all three of those expressions and set it equal to 180. So I'm going to have... 3x plus 5. I'm putting them in parentheses. Since you're adding them, you don't really have to, but I'm just doing it. 4x minus 15 plus 2x plus 10 equals 180. Okay, so I'm going to add up all my like terms over here. It'll give me 3, 4, and 2 is 9x. Got positive 5. Positive 10, which is 15, negative 15, cancels that out. So it would actually just be zero. So you'd have 9x equals 180, divide by 9x is 20. All right, so I got x, right? Oops, there we go. All right, now let's kind of go back here, okay? It says, which statement is true? So it's giving me two, a and b are giving me two sides being equal. Okay, and you're going to say, well, how can I know that if I'm talking about angles? Well, again, let's remember different kinds of triangles. If I have a scaling triangle, all three angles are different. All three sides are different. If I have isosceles, two of the angles are the same and two of the sides are the same. And then I have equilateral where all the angles are equal and all the sides are equal. So let's start with 20. Okay, let's start with the 20 and plug them in see if we can get E or F because then we might not even have to worry about the first two, okay, E or F, I meant three or four, I'm sorry. So you we get three or four, so we only have to worry about the first two. So let's see here. D, if we plug in 20, would be three times 20 plus five. Three times 20 is 60 plus five is 65. So there's that, okay. E, 4X minus 15, I think this is going to be it. 4 times 20 minus 15, 4 times 20 is 80 minus 15, 
is 65. So those are both 65 degrees. Do we have D equal Z? No, we don't. Okay, so that's why I was talking about the uh, line segment. So that's, um, that's what's going to make this one tough. So we actually need to draw out this triangle, okay? So, again, you can go in letter order. I'm going to put D up there. I could put if E down there, F down there, or the other way. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do it like this, okay? So it says D and E are both my 65-degree angles, right? So there and there. So the sides that they are crossed from, this one and this one, have to be the two congruent ones, okay? And then this would be like 50-degree angle, all right? So, not that, that that doesn't necessarily matter right now. All right, so I've got DF is congruent to EF. Let's see if we got that one. DF is con is equal to, not congruent, but equal to FE, but that's the one I want. So, number one, DF is equal to FE, okay? All right, 47. If line AB is contained in plane P and line AB is perpendicular to plane R, which statement is true? So the best way to kind of do this would be to visualize it, okay? So I could maybe try to get a piece of paper and a, a whiteboard and show it. Um, if y'all kind of want me to show that, if you can't necessarily visualize it yourself, so it's fine, I could do something like that. But kind of think about it like, Plane P is the floor of the room you're currently in, and plane R is the one of the walls, okay? So, if line AB is in plane P, so let's say it's going straight across the floor um, vertically. Okay, well, let me try to do it like this. Let me see. Let me actually try to draw something out here on the whiteboard. Let me see if this will kind of help y'all. All right, so I'm going to kind of try to do it like, try to do it visually. I know it's a little slanted, but all right. So let's say this was your floor. Well, shoot, because that's, that's actually at an angle now. It's not going to look right. I was trying to do it so it looked right. That's not going to quite look right. Um, all right. I'm going to grab a piece of paper here and do something. See, I'll give me a second. I'm going to try to show it. I'm going to blank piece of paper. I might on the back of the four nail sheet. Okay. All right. So here's my line in my paper. Okay. So... Plane P is, is the, the piece of paper. Plane R is my board. Okay, it's standing up here on the side. Okay, if you can kind of look at the line, if it's going straight into the board. Let me kind of do it like this so y'all can see the edge of the board, okay? If you could visualize the edge of the board right here in that line, they look like they're perpendicular, right? They form a, let me try to get it over a little closer even so they're actually touching, okay? Even though, even though you know it's kind of 3D or whatever. They form a right angle, right? Coming straight up. Okay? So, that's kind of the idea I was saying. So, this line is perpendicular. The line on the paper is, parallel, is perpendicular to the whiteboard. All right? So, which other statement is true? Well, again, let's think about any line on this plane. So, you can even do the top edge or the bottom edge. Go in the same direction as the line. Okay? Again, if you kind of did the same way here, the edge of the paper and this edge of the whiteboard, okay, still form a right angle, right? So kind of the idea that we're trying to say is if the line and the plane are perpendicular, then this paper, again, it's flat going straight across horizontal. This is going straight up vertical. Those have to be perpendicular as well. So that's going to be plane P is perpendicular to plane R. Okay, so that's going to be answer choice four. All right. 
a lot of questions on this one. All right, 48. We kind of had one like this uh, on one of the videos from last week. I forget which one. Um, let me actually go back and look, see which page it was. That's page eight. It's page seven. All right, it's page seven. Similar problem to this, right? So it's a similar problem, except it's got that extra kind of line going through it. But it's kind of the same idea, okay? What it's telling us is chord AB and GH are parallel. And then you got this other chord. So it kind of forms two, if you look at it, it actually forms two parallel lines with the transversal. But that's not what my question's going for. I'm trying to see which arcs are equal. So it's the same idea as on the last one, okay? Since those are parallel, okay? And again, it's kind of, it kind of goes back. It's, it's roughly the same idea when you have um, two tangent lines coming from the same point outside the circle to the edges of the circle, okay? Um, about distance. So if you got two parallel lines, they're going to be the same distance apart always, right? Even if you do, so same distance apart here, same distance apart here. Even if you got the little arcs like this, okay, the roundness of the circle, again, remember, a circle's even. It's not like an oval, okay? So it's always going to be the same. So even though it's curved, it's not straight, this distance and this distance is the same. So it's going to be arc AG is congruent to arc BH. So answer choice four. All right. Uh, 49. Given three distinct quadrilaterals, a square, rectangle, and rhombus, which quadrilaterals must have perpendicular diagonals? Okay. So we've kind of touched on this with a rhombus. Okay. Hadn't really touched on it with a rectangle and a square. I'll try to draw the rectangle so hopefully you can see it's kind of obvious. Okay, if I make a really long and skinny rectangle, I know y'all can't see it, there we go, all right? So if I draw my diagonals, again, it says they're perpendicular, so they form 90 degree angles. These are very obviously not 90 degree angles. This is obtuse, and top and bottom are obtuse, those are acute, okay? Now, on the other hand, if I draw a square, okay, it's slightly off, but if I if I turn it sideways again, those pretty much look like they're right angles, right? Again, I drew it off a little bit, so my drawing's not perfect, but you kind of get the idea. So we talked about rhombuses being so. Let me try to draw it and see if I don't know if this is gonna. Do more help or more hurt, but I'm gonna try to draw the rhombus where they're all. That's more like a parallelogram. The long sides are longer. All right, I think that's pretty close. All right, so let's try drawing them now. Yeah, that's pretty darn tootin'. All right. Yeah, so now if you look now, again, it looks like they're right angles, right? So it's going to be a rhombus and a square, which is answer choice three once again. All right, number 50, last one. One that we, uh, again, we were, last thing we were working on before break, and I don't actually think anybody's actually sent me into work finishing that out, even though I put the videos on about volume, okay? Diameter of a sphere is 15 inches. What's the volume of a sphere to the nearest cube, tenth of a cubic inch? Well, again, let's go find our volume formula for a sphere. Four thirds pi r cubed, so I need the radius, okay? Tells me diameter is 15. How do I get the radius? Cut it in half, which would be 7.5, okay? So I'm gonna have no, it's a little blurry. Let me try to back it up. See if it's not main house blurry. All right. So four thirds pi, seven point five cubed. Again, how I would punch in the calculator would be four times pi times seven point five. Try and do it how y'all might see in y'all's calculators. Cubed divided by three. If you kind of want to double check it, 
I have my calculator. So I'll punch that in exactly how I did it. All right, so I've got parentheses four times pi, 0.5 to the third power, divided by three, 1767 point, it says nearest 10, so I would round down to point one, which is my second answer choice, 1767.1. There we go. All right, so that's page nine, and be on the lookout for pages 10, 11, and 12.